Hi again, everybody. My name is Greg Anderson, and this is the Good Timekeeping Show with Greg Anderson. And here's a watch I've really enjoyed. I've had this for just about uh, over a year. I found it kind of on a clearance price at Walmart, and originally it had a resin uh, band. And I went and found uh, a watch bracelet that was originally designed to go with the uh, the Casio Duro watch, the MDV 106. So I managed to put the the Duro bracelet on this watch, and I think it's a great combination. This is the Casio Illuminator watch. So a good, you know, all-around analog watch with a day-date window there. And this button up here is for a a, a backlight that actually works pretty well. But as you can see, the watch itself not working all that well at the moment. The watch has stopped. My suspicion when this was on clearance, uh, had a good price at Walmart last year, was that it probably had been sitting in the display case for a long, long time, never sold, and they were just kind of get, getting rid of it before the battery wore out. So I got about a year's worth of battery on this, and then uh, the battery did wear out. And so now, I think I'll show you how to change the battery. Now, since it has uh, that illuminator light there, it actually has two batteries, one for the light and one for you know the, the clock movement itself. So they recommend that if you have to replace either one of those batteries, you might as well do them both at the same time. But let's kind of see how difficult that is to do. So the first thing I'm gonna have to do is open up the back here, and this is a screw-on uh, case back. So I'll have to get the proper tool out so I can unscrew that and uh, reach the batteries and see what I can do with this. Now the first thing I would recommend if you're doing something like this, there's kind of a lot of small pieces and you don't want to lose anything. So uh, get yourself a good clean surface and put something like this, a microfiber cloth that I've got here, so that if any small pieces fall out, they won't just roll off the table and get lost on the floor in the carpet or whatever. So that's my first recommendation. I'm going to remember that uh, this micro adjustment uh, is here on the outer part. And I'm just going to take a, a spring bar tool and I'm going to remove the little spring bar that's holding that in place. All right, not too bad there. Now I need to take this case back off and there are a couple of kinds of tools you can get. This one, if it's large enough, see all I have to do is kind of span the back of the case there. And this is just barely large enough to do that. Or uh, if something is larger than this, uh, you know, I might want to get one of these fancy kind of case back tools. But I think for now, I'll try to keep with this simple one. So basically, I just need to take these little tabs here and hook them into uh, two indentations on either uh, opposite end of, of this case back. And then I can kind of tighten that down so that it won't slip. So let me just uh, get that going really quick. And if I'm satisfied that that's going to hold, then I can just very carefully twist the back of this case until it actually comes undone. Okay, and it's counterclockwise like you would normally expect to twist it if you're trying to loosen something. Okay. Now, what I'm going to find inside here, first of all, there's going to be kind of an O-ring or something to help seal this. Although, you know, screw down case backs are usually pretty good at uh, sealing, but there, there will be a little bit of an O-ring, you know, right along there. So I need to make sure that that is intact and in the right place when I put everything back together. And here you can see there are kind of two pieces of this. There's uh, this one that uses a lithium battery, and that's for the, the light, and then the, uh, the other part underneath. So I need to very carefully actually remove this kind of light module, if you will, from back here. Okay, that's the light part, and underneath that, then you can see, you know, the clock uh, mechanism, the little clock movement part of it down there. So, uh, I know some people would say, oh, Greg, you shouldn't be doing this without gloves on. You're going to get your your finger oils all over the inside of this, and I I think it'll be all right. I've done this, I don't know, I've just done this with lots of different (laughs) uh, watches over the years and never really had a problem. So, there's there's the, the battery that has gone flat on us. And I happen to have a replacement right here. This is an SR920SW battery. So all I have to do now is put this back in, or put put the new one in rather, and it just pops right back in that little space right there. Easy enough. And so that's ready to go. Now, if I wanted to be really thorough, I would go ahead and change this lithium battery on this light module, but I'm gonna I'm gonna leave it actually. <laughs> because I rarely use the light on this. So I think this one's probably gonna be good to go through a couple of different uh, battery changes. 
Now, before I get too far ahead of myself, one thing you're gonna have to watch out for when you put this light module back in is that uh, this little tab here lines up with the button that has to be pressed and actually needs to be down there uh, far enough that the button and this tab correctly interact with each other. So one good way to do that would be just to take, you know, something small, like I could do the tip of this spring bar tool here, and uh, just make sure I'm going to kind of depress this where the button would normally be pushing against that. Just give that and then yeah, see how it just sort of shifted better into place right there. So now that tells me that the button and that little tab are correctly interacting with each other. And I'll need that to happen in order for the light to work correctly when I get it all put back together. And uh, now all I have to do is uh, let's see, check my O-ring is in the right place around the edge of the case. Now all I have to do is gently place this case back, back where it's supposed to be, and gently start turning that and uh, get that threaded in so that it will hold again. Okay, looking good so far. I'll just give it another extra twist using the tool now. Okay, looking good. Now, I guess I should turn it over and make sure it actually worked. Yep, there we go. The watch is running. So I'm going to go ahead and put this spring bar back on the, on the watch bracelet uh, around the clasp there so that it can be used again as normal. And again, it's always nice if you have the proper, you know, spring bar tool to assist you in getting these spring bars back into place. You could try it with tiny, you know, screwdrivers and just, you know, I don't know, paper clips or I don't know what people use when they don't quite have the exact right tool. But boy, it does make it a, a, a nice, nice thing to work with if you have the right tool. Not that much of a chore as long as you have the right tool to uh, to do the job. And there you go. Now all I have to do now is set the watch to the right time. And so uh, lucky for me, I was right there near the uh, one second mark. So if I put this ahead right now, the the date and uh, you know the day of the week are set to yesterday. So if I bring this around, see how far I need to go. Okay, so that tells me that it just went from a.m. to p.m. So I'm gonna have to bring it around one more time in order to have the date and uh, day of the week advance. So that worked there. And now, right now, it's about two o'clock in the afternoon. So I got to bring it around one more time past the 12 and uh, past the two for these. They say you should go beyond what the right time is and then bring it back. So um, in just a moment, it's going to be 208. So I'm just going to hold it there. And in a moment when it's the right time uh, synchronized with the atomic clock, all I do is press the crown in and the second hand will start running and the watch should be good to go for another couple of years, maybe three. And uh, there you go. It's been a nice watch. Uh, this is not one of the fanciest watches out there, but a nice diver style watch, 100 meter water resistant and uh, has actually has a turning bezel, which a lot of people, you know, want to make sure that those aren't just decoration, that it actually turns. So I've got a full in-depth review on this watch, but I uh, just thought I'd show you uh, that tricky module where there are two batteries to contend with. And uh, that's that's how you do it. And just to be sure I got it right. Uh, OK, watch is running. Let me just turn on the super illuminator. Uh, I really like the way that looks, that light there. And everything is running correctly. Light works, watch works. Looks like my battery situation is uh, is OK again. So there you go, just a little something to inspire you if you uh, want to try tackling the battery change all by yourself with the proper tools. Shouldn't be very difficult at all. And that's all for now, and I hope you'll join me again next time for another episode of The Good Timekeeping Show.